giant insects, tiny mammoths, and whales that used to be small on land. In the story of size, expectation gets turned upside down. Rats are the heroes, ants are the kings, and people are getting bigger all the time. People will probably be seven or maybe even eight feet tall. Size matters right now on Evolve. What if there were a world where the big creatures were small and the small creatures were big? In fact, we're living in it. The sizes of different animals seems fixed, but in the long view of evolutionary time, they are ever-changing and full of surprises. The world's most massive land animal today is the African savanna elephant. The biggest was 13 feet tall at the shoulder and 24,000 pounds. Far smaller, of course, are the tiny ants scampering underfoot, weighing in at one one-thousandth of an ounce. The elephants outweigh the ants, right? Wrong. Biomass is the sum total of the weight of a group of animals or plants. What's amazing is that the biomass of ants makes up 20% of the biomass of all other animals on the land, even though each individual ant is tiny. In fact, ants outweigh elephants by more than 10 to 1. Elephants, 3 million tons. Ants, 33 million tons. Weight, length, height. Nothing is fixed, nothing is certain. Size changes because size can determine an animal's fate. Fundamentally, for animals, size matters. It makes a difference to every interaction you have with other organisms, and it makes a difference to the way you live in your environment. It affects how much you need to feed, it affects what you can feed on, and it affects what's gonna feed on you. Everything depends on size. The story of size is an unending series of outlandish science fiction tales. Bugs as big as birds, elephant relatives as small as ponies. The only difference is these stories are scientific fact. I would love to have a house mammoth. Pygmy mammoths, relatives of elephants, evolved on the Channel Islands off of California. Paleontologist Larry Agenbrod was the first to identify these full-grown but tiny mammoths back in 1994. Got a phone call from Channel Islands National Park, and they explained they had a big skeleton being exposed on the island. Could I determine whether it was a mammoth or something else? Mammoths emerged about 1.8 million years ago, and some species were alive as recently as 4,000 years ago. Mammoths were larger than modern-day elephants, up to 14 feet at the shoulder. What Agenbrod found on the island that day was strangely smaller. At the Mammoth Site Museum in Hot Springs, South Dakota, Agenbrod compares his beasts. Here's a uh, femur of another mammoth. It's the same femur as we got there, a right femur. But you can see that it's very small only a fraction of the size of this big Colombian mammoth. A study of the wear and tear on the bones determined that the smaller animal was not a juvenile. It was a fully grown adult. Years of digging since that first find have revealed that an entire community of pygmy mammoths evolved on the island. On the island, I'm finding the average size of about five and a half feet. These mammoths were one-tenth the weight and half the height of their cousins on the mainland and lived there as recently as 20,000 years ago. Why did the mammoths evolve to be so small? 
Agenbrod knew the environment played a role and that strange things happen to an animal's size on islands. On the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean, tortoises can balloon to 700 pounds, three and a half times continental size. Indonesia's Komodo Island is home to the world's largest lizard, the 10-foot Komodo dragon. These giants thrive, cut off from predators. So why would a mammoth shrink? Agenbrod looked to the island history for clues. He discovered that over time, sea levels rose. And what was one large island with a broad coast became three smaller islands of steep and craggy peaks. To survive, the huge mammoths would have to find grass to eat higher and higher on the steep slopes of the island's interior. And for that task, being big was a huge disadvantage. Like a poorly designed SUV, their center of gravity was too high. I put these specimens on slopes and find that the continental mammoth could only handle about 20 to 25 degrees, whereas the pygmy mammoth was comfortable with up to 35 degree slope. Over many years, the big mammoths died out. The smaller ones survived, mated, and bred generations still smaller, until the pygmy was all that was left. In evolutionary terms, we're looking at adaptation. So the island selects for a smaller animal capable of getting to upland pastures. Like all animals on Earth, the size of pygmy mammoths was determined by a complex cocktail of factors. Here on this island, food supply and the lay of the land were enough to shrink them to one-tenth of their original mass. They were able to adapt and survive until humans arrived on the scene. So I think these little beasts saw the first people arrive on the island, and the first people that arrived on the island saw a meat source that was manageable. I kind of regret the fact that we didn't have an island where nobody ever got to. They were still on Wrangell Island to 3,700 years ago. That's when the Egyptians were piling rocks and make pyramids. Agenbrod holds out hope that even though humans were a major factor in their demise, someday humans might engineer the mammoth's return. I'm for cloning if we can bring back a mammoth. I see no reason not to bring him back if we have the skill and the technology to do so. Whatever you have imagined in your wildest dreams now becomes a visual reality. This ad for an old science fiction flick shows a bee the size of a car. What's it doing? Seeing a scene. Insects never got that big. But in the science reality of 260 million years ago, the fossil records clearly shows that there really were bugs like Menonura ancestor of dragonflies, buzzing around with wingspans of three feet. Arthropleura, the seven-foot-long crawly ancestors of millipedes. And giant mayflies over a foot long and bigger than a blue jay. It turns out the bugs grew big because of an excess of oxygen in the atmosphere. Now, in a lab in Arizona, paleontologist John Vandenbrooks is working to see if he can grow bugs big again. We're rearing insects in the lab here under different oxygen levels to see how it affects their modern development. 
The most massive bug in the world is the South American Titanus beetle. It can range up to six and a half inches long. Why can't it grow bigger? Today's auction level is approximately 21%. And contrary to the popular view, auction actually vary greatly from that value through geologic time. Oxygen is at its highest recorded levels when insects are giants. Could this be why they could grow then and not now? This video x-ray shows a beetle breathing, not through a closed system with lungs and a bloodstream carrying oxygen like humans, but through a series of tubes, like an open-air duct system, bringing in air directly from the outside world through the insect's hard and inflexible shell. These straw-like tubes are called trachea, and they are what keeps today's bugs from getting too big. With increased body size, the amount of that internal body that's taken up with trachea or the respiratory structures in insects increases. As the bugs get larger, the bigger air tubes squeeze out the muscles, and a maximum size is quickly reached because a bug without leg muscles can't move and gets eaten. Vandenbroek's bugs were fed on oxygen levels amped up from today's 21% of the atmosphere to the same rich 30% oxygen mix that existed in the time of the giant insects. The result, 25 to 30% larger bugs. Because the trachea can draw enough fuel staying just the size they are. With enough generations, who knows how large these oxygen-fed bugs might grow? What if oxygen levels rose again? Would the ad for that old science fiction movie be a coming attraction for our own future? The answer is likely not. With higher oxygen levels, an insect may be able to achieve a much larger body size, but just because it can doesn't mean that they always will. It's these other factors such as predation, and nutritional availability that will also work in combination with the environmental factors to really establish what body size that a group of insects or an individual insect will actually grow to. Oxygen supply is just one of dozens of factors that influence how big an animal can get. Some of these factors, like gravity, we've known about for a long time. Some remain mysteries like how the blue whale grew to become the largest creature that has ever lived. The jaws of this animal alone could swallow a small compact car. Now, these two scientists think they might have finally uncovered the answer to the mystery of the blue whale. See how much the muscles actually... I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, this is unprecedented. Facing the challenges of their changing environments, creatures have shrunk and exploded in size over time like the images in a funhouse mirror. But there is at least one life form that has kept the same size for 3.8 billion years. Bacteria started small and has stayed that way ever since. And there's a tendency to think that bigger is better but really, being small is a pretty good trick. For bacteria, it's been a nearly unrivaled story of evolutionary success. It's been said that if humans disappeared from the Earth, 99.9% .9 of species wouldn't even notice that anything had happened. But if the bacteria disappeared from the Earth, humans would be dead in a matter of hours. But it seems that getting bigger is a stronger trend. About 1.8 billion years ago, some single-celled creatures either split on their own or joined with others to form the first multicellular organisms. They were the giants of their day, and they started a trend toward larger forms that would continue. Given a favorable set of circumstances, life tends to size up. One reason that animals might get bigger through evolutionary time, if you have animals within a species competing with one another, and the big ones are always winning and the small ones are always losing, the big ones have more babies and the small ones have fewer babies, and therefore, over time, 
you would see a progression from smaller animals to bigger animals, which is exactly what we see for a lot of different groups.